assalamu alaikum welcome to wetlek today i am going to discuss the anatomy of stomach of uh, ruminants and non ruminants in non ruminants i'll discuss the anatomy of stomach of dog and horse first of all i am discussing the anatomy of ruminant stomach stomach is actually a, actually a dilation of gastrointestinal tract and it is present aboral to the esophagus its function is to receive the ingesta coming uh, from the esophagus and it temporarily stores the ingesta and also causes partial digestion of the ingesta the walls of the stomach are lined by two types of epithelium so the lining of the stomach may be composed of uh, may be composed of glandular epithelium or it may be composed of non glandular epithelium the stomach of canines is purely composed the lining of the stomach of canines uh, pure is pu purely com uh, composed of uh, glandular epithelium while the uh, lining of the stomach of ruminants and horse contains both glandular epithelium and non glandular epithelium now the non glandular epithelium is actually stratified squamous epithelium and on the other hand the glandular lining of the stomach walls uh, contains simple columnar epithelium the stomach of ruminants is called composite or compound stomach and it is also called four stomach ruminants don't have uh, actually they don't have four stomachs but they have single stomach and this single stomach actually uh, is further divided into four compartments so these four compartments of the ruminant stomach combine to form the whole stomach of the ruminant and therefore we call the ruminant stomach as compound stomach the different compartments which are present in the ruminant stomach are rumen reticulum omasum and abomasum rumen reticulum and omasum of the ruminant stomach are the non glandular portions of the ruminant stomach and they are lined with stratified squamous epithelium as i have discussed before the last part of the ruminant stomach which is called abomasum is the only glandular portion of the ruminant stomach so out of the four compartments of the ruminant stomach only abomasum secretes glandular secretions now let's talk about the rumen rumen is the largest compartment of the ruminant stomach and it fills the most part of the abdomen's left half so the rumen is present on the left side of the abdominal cavity due to the large size of the rumen the other organs which are present in the abdominal cavity of ruminants are displaced to the right side of the abdomen rumen of ruminants is actually a site where the fermentation of ingesta occurs if we talk about the anatomical position of the rumen then we can say that it is present on the caudal aspect of the diaphragm up to the pelvic inlet rumen has two borders and two surfaces so the first i am talking about borders room the borders of the rumen are dorsal border and ventral border the dorsal curvature of the rumen is called dorsal border and the ventral curvature of the rumen is called ventral border similarly rumen has two surfaces and these are lateral surface and the visceral surface visceral surface of the rumen is that surface that faces the organs of the abdominal cavity externally the rumen contains many depressions and internally these depressions can be identified as the pillars of the rumen so the external depressions of the rumen are called grooves and internally these grooves are identified as the pillars of the rumen the function of these grooves is actually to divide the rumen into different sacs so rumen is divided into different sacs like dorsal sac ventral sac caudo dorsal blind sac caudo ventral blind sac and etc the groove that divides the rumen into two major sacs like dorsal sac and ventral sac uh, the groove that is divided that is dividing the rumen into these two sacs is called longitudinal groove and this longitudinal groove is present both on the lateral surface of the rumen and on the visceral surface of the rumen so the longitudinal groove which is present on the lateral surface of the rumen is called left longitudinal groove and the longitudinal groove which is present on the visceral surface is called right longitudinal groove so the longitudinal grooves from both lateral and visceral surface are dividing the 
uh, rumen into dorsal and ventral sacs another groove is present near the longitudinal groove and this is called accessory groove this accessory groove is also present on both the surfaces of rumen so on the lateral surface of the rumen this accessory groove starts from the longitudinal groove and moves dorsally and on the visceral surface uh, this accessory groove starts from the uh, right longitudinal groove and moves dorsally and then again it meets with the long right longitudinal groove of the rumen and in this way this right accessory groove is forming an an arc dorsal to the longitudinal groove so when this right accessory groove forms an arc dorsal to the right longitudinal groove an area is formed between the right longitudinal groove and right accessory groove and this area is known as insula ruminis like longitudinal groove and accessory groove uh, on the cranial aspect of the rumen there is a cranial groove and on the caudal aspect of the rumen there is a caudal groove the cranial groove of the rumen divides the cranial aspect of the rumen into ruminal recess and atrium or cranial sac and similarly the caudal groove of the rumen uh, divides the caudal aspect of the rumen into caudo dorsal blind sac and caudo ventral blind sac so the cranial sac is actually the uh, ventral proliferation of the rumen between the cranial pillar and rumino reticular fold this cranial sac is actually the part of the dorsal sac of the rumen but it is present more on the ventral side so we can we say that it is the ventral proliferation of the rumen so the cranial sac is formed when the rumen is divided by the cranial groove and the rumino reticular fold this rumino reticular fold is present between the rumen and reticulum so the rumino reticular fold and cranial pillar a uh, cranial pillar divide the rumen into cranial sac and this cranial sac is actually the part of the dorsal sac of the rumen and but it is present uh, more ventrally so we we say that it is a ventral pro proliferation similarly the ventral sac of the rumen forms ruminal recess at the cranial aspect of the uh, ventral sac of rumen so in short at the cranial aspect of the rumen uh, dorsally the ruminal recess is present and cranial sac is present ventrally sorry sorry uh, cranial uh, cranial sac is present uh, dorsally and ruminal recess is present ventr ventrally similarly in addition to the caudal groove of the rumen there is an other groove called coronary groove which helps in the formation of caudo dorsal blind sac and caudo ventral blind sac there are actually two coronary grooves and these are dorsal coronary groove and ventral coronary groove and these both dorsal and ventral coronary grooves are present on both surfaces of the uh, rumen but the dorsal coronary groove is not well developed uh, on the other hand the ventral coronary groove is well developed on both lateral and visceral surface of the rumen now the dorsal coronary grooves from both the lateral surface and visceral surface of the rumen uh, along with the caudal groove of the rumen divide the rumen into caudo dorsal blind sac so this caudo dorsal blind sac is formed by the division of the rumen uh, uh, by the uh, caudal groove and dorsal coronary groove similarly ventral coronary groove from both surfaces of the rumen along with the caudal groove of the rumen divide the rumen into caudo ventral blind sac so at the caudal aspect of the rumen caudo dorsal blind sac is present dorsally and caudo ventral blind sac is present ventrally and these both sacs are divided by the caudal groove of the rumen and coronary grooves uh, both dorsal and ventral coronary grooves from uh, from the both lateral and visceral surfaces of the rumen there is another structure which is present in the rumen and it is the cardiac opening or cardia which is the esophageal entrance into the rumen so the ingesta easily passes from the esophagus uh, to the rumen through cardia this cardia is present at a point somewhat dorsal to the uh, rumino reticular fold so in this way the heavy materials or foreign bodies entering the rumen uh, fall into a uh, fall through the cranial part of rumen into the reticulum and the remaining ingesta is passed to the dorsal sac of the rumen 
Now let's talk about the internal structure of the rumen. As I have told you previously that the uh, external grooves or depressions of the rumen are uh, identi identified as pillars uh, inter in internally of the rumen. So internally these grooves are uh, identified as pillars. The names of these pillars of the rumen are same like their respective grooves like right longitudinal pillar, uh, left longitudinal pillar, uh, right accessory pillar, left accessory pillar, cranial pillar, caudal pillar, ruminoreticular fold and coronary pillars. Internally the rumen contains several papillae and the function of these papillae is to increase the surface area for the absorption. The papillae which are present in the ventral sac of the rumen are well developed than those present in the dorsal sac of the rumen. The other name for rumen is paunch. Now let's talk about the reticulum. Reticulum is present against the diaphragm or we can say that it is present at the uh, caudal aspect of the diaphragm and it is the most cranial compartment of the ruminant stomach and it is located on the median plane of the body because the lat lateral uh, wall of the uh, abdominal cavity is occupied by the rumen. The interior of the uh, reticulum contains uh, various honeycomb-like compartments and these compartments are called crista reticuli. These honeycomb-like compartments also contain papillae uh, like uh, those papillae that are present in the rumen. So these papillae are also present in the uh, honeycomb-like compartments of the reticulum. The other name of the reticulum is hardware stomach uh, because it traps the foreign bodies like uh, glass pieces, metal wires, nails uh, and uh, uh, these materials which are ingested along with the food. So it is called hardware stomach. The third compartment of the ruminant stomach is omesum which is a bean shaped compartment in small ruminants but it is spherical in large ruminants and this compartment of the ruminant stomach is present caudal to the reticulum and it also lies on the medial plane of the body. Internally the omesum contains uh, muscular laminae which are called omessal laminae and these laminae uh, are also covered with short papillae and the size of these uh, laminae muscular laminae uh, uh, varies in their uh, varies very so they vary in their size these muscular laminae of variable size are actually uh, parallel leaf like structures projecting into the interior of, from the wall of the omessum and because of the page-like appearance of the muscular laminae of omesum, uh, the other name of omesum is butcher's bible or book. The last part of the ruminant stomach is the abomesum and it is the only glandular portion of the ruminant stomach. The abomesum lies on the, upon the abdominal floor. Internally, the abomesum contains spiral folds called plesis spirals uh, which increase the internal surface of the abomasum. Abomasum is the true stomach of ruminants and like the stomach of non-ruminants, uh, it contains the same parts like fundus, body, uh, antrum, uh, pyloric antrum and pylorus. In the lumen of the pyloric canal of the abomasum, there is a round swelling called torus pyloricus and it is a feature of only ruminant stomach. There is an additional structure in the abomasum of ruminants which is present only in suckling ruminants and is absent in the adults and this structure is gastric groove. This gastric groove is actually a channel uh, which follows the lesser curvature of the stomach and this channel starts from the uh, cardiac opening and this channel or tube uh, after starting from the cardiac opening bypasses the rumen, reticulum and, ob and omesum and uh, it directly opens into or empties into abomasum. So the gastric groove uh, is a tube from cardiac opening to the abomasum. So this gastric groove is divided into uh, reticular groove, omesal groove and abomasal groove. The circling with the head up causes the lips of this groove to close and in this way it forms a tube from cardiac opening to the abomasum and prevents the entry of the digesta into the rumen and directly passes this ingesta uh, to the uh, abomasum. Now let's talk about the non-ruminant stomach of the dog. 
स्टमक ऑफ डॉग इज कम्पोज ओनली ऑफ द ग्लैंडुलर स्टमक लाइनिंग द स्टमक ऑफ द डॉग हैज टू करवेचर एंड टू सर्फेस देर इज अ ग्रेटर करवेचर एंड अ लेसर करवेचर इन द स्टमक ऑफ डॉग द ग्रेटर करवेचर ऑफ द स्टमक ऑफ डॉग इज अ लॉन्ग कन्वेक्स सर्फेस ऑफ द स्टमक विच एक्सटेंड फ्रॉम द कार्डिया ऑफ द स्टमक टू द पायलोरस This greater curvature of the stomach of dog is also an attachment site for the greater omentum. So the superficial leaf of the greater omentum of the stomach of dog attaches to the greater curvature uh, externally. Similarly, the lesser curvature is a short concave surface of the stomach, and it also extends from the cardia to the pylorus, and it is also an attachment site for the lesser omentum. The parietal surface of the stomach of dog is the side of stomach which is in contact with the liver and visceral surface is the side of stomach in contact with the remaining abdominal viscera. The opening of the esophagus into the stomach is called cardia or ostium cardiacum and cardia cardiac part is the portion of the stomach uh, which surrounds the esophagus. The stomach of dog is composed of cardia, fundus, body, pyloric antrum and py- and pylorus fundus is the blind expanded portion of the stomach's left side and it uh, it imi- it is present immediately adjacent to the cardia and it is often filled with gas which can be seen in the radiographs the body of the stomach is the largest part of the stomach which extends from the cardia of the stomach to pyloric part of stomach the pylorus of the stomach is a distal opening of the stomach which is surrounded by a strong band of circular muscles and this strong band of circular muscles controls the uh, trans- transport of the stomach contents into the duodenum and in this way it controls the emptying of the stomach the whole pylorus contains a pyloric part which is a portion of the stomach distal to the body a pyloric antrum which is a wide proximal part of the pyloric part and uh, and last part of the pylorus is pyloric canal which is a narrow distal passage surrounded by strong muscular band now let's talk about the stomach of horse stomach of horse contains both glandular and non glandular epithelium the parts of the stomach of horse are same like cardiac opening fundus body pyloric antrum and pylorus just like the dog's stomach the fundus of equine's stomach contains non glandular epithelium while the body and pylorus contain glandular epithelium and these glandular and non glandular portions of the stomach of horse are clearly visible uh, by an internal irregular raised line which separates uh, these both parts and this uh, separating line can also be seen ex- uh, externally so it is a clearly visible feature that is present both internally and externally and this line irregular or uh, and raised line is called a margoplicatus or folded margin